financial analysis, ratio analysis. Financial statements are very useful to provide information to its users, but the absolute figures have no value in itself if they are not correlated with each other. The independent figures have no value until these figures are not associated with each other. If we associate values with some variable, the figures give a significant meaning. Under the ratio analysis, such type of relationship between different items are calculated to analyze and interpret the financial statement. This lesson discusses the details of ratio analysis. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to understand the meaning of ratio analysis, describe the advantage and limitation of ratio analysis, make the calculation of ratios, calculate different ratios on the basis of profitability, DuPont chart, liquidity, leverage, solvency and activity. Explain the meaning of management analysis and discussion. Ratio is a mathematical relationship between two items and a group of items of financial statements. Under ratio analysis, several ratios are calculated and then studied to draw inference. Ratio may be expressed in form of such as pure ratio, proportion, percentage ratio and rate ratio or times or turnover. When the amount of two figures are arrived by simple division of one amount by another, it is said pure ratio or proportion. To get percentage ratio, one item is divided by other item and the quotient is multiplied by 100. In rate ratio method, rate is determined by dividing the one item by other item. The obtained quotient is expressed in U. There is no standard classification of the accounting ratios. Still, some important types of profitability ratios are computed on the basis of factors such as sales. The formula to calculate it is given on the screen. To check the overall profitability and efficiency of the business, profitability ratio based on capital or assets are more useful than ratio based on sales. The theory behind this is that the amount of profit is earned on the total assets capital. Various ratios are calculated by formulae given on the screen. A DuPont chart is a way to show how finances work in a construction firm. As discussed earlier, ROI or ROCE is the product of two ratios, that is, net profit ratio and sales to capital employed ratio. Return on capital employed is affected by a number of factors. If net profit ratio changes, ROCE, ROI will also change as it is based on it. If cost of sales increases without other changes, net profit will decrease as a result of ROCE. ROI would also decrease. In the same way, if the working capital decreases, total capital employed will also decrease and in the absence of any decrease, the ROI will increase. There are so many factors which may affect the ROI. These factors are interrelated with each other. These factors can be represented in a chart which is known as a DuPont chart. This chart was first used by DuPont Company of USA in their annual report. Therefore, it is called the DuPont chart. The figure shows one such chart for profit. Liquidity ratios are also known by the name of short-term solvency ratios. These ratios are relating with short-term financial position of the company. Liquidity ratios are used to find out ability of the company to pay its short-term obligation from its short-term resources. Short-term obligations include creditors, bank, money lenders, suppliers, employees, etc. The screen shows various liquidity ratios with formulae. Solvency ratio indicates the company's ability to meet its long-term liabilities. Therefore, these ratios are also called long-term solvency ratios. The long-term liability of a company comprises of debentures, long-term loans, unpaid installments or high purchase, and long-term creditors. The long-term creditors take interest in those ratios which highlight the long-term financial position of the company so that they may ensure regarding the payment of the principal amount on maturity as well as regular interest on the dues. The screen shows various solvency ratios with their family. In the financial management, the leverage is used as a tool to accelerate the return for shareholders by using debt financing. When the rate of earning becomes more than the fixed cost of debts in the market, such a leverage becomes favorable, otherwise unfavorable. In other words, to do more work by a little effort is called lever. Similarly, slight increase or decrease in the selling price of financing will change the rate of return to shareholders. It is called the leverage work. The screen shows various leverage ratios with their formula. The management discussion and analysis, or MD, and the section of quarterly and financial statements, as well as registration statements, seek to force a company's management to take responsibility for their actions and those of the company. Corporate filers must offer detail about issues such as revenues, past and future plans for the company, uncertainty within the company, source of liquidity, cash flow problems, liability, rising funds, and materiality. Management might not enjoy filling out the MD and A section of financial statement. 
but it is an essential part of such statements. The public is entitled to this information and it is critical to the ability to correctly evaluate. Now let us check if we've understood the basic concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Liquidity ratios indicate company's ability to meet its long-term liabilities. Right or wrong? Please click. Wrong. Ratio is mathematical relationship between two items and a group of items of financial statements. Right or wrong? Please click. Right. Solvency ratios are used to find out the ability of the company to pay its short-term obligations. Right or wrong? Please click. Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we've studied till so far. Ratio is a numerical relationship between two items or group of the same nature of financial statements. It can be expressed in the proportion, percentage, or turnover. Ratio analysis makes the financial statement simple or rearranged so that those may be understood easily. Comparison between two firms, two periods. Comparison between two firms, two periods. It also helps in calculating the efficiency, profitability, and solvency long-term as well as short-term. In spite of being so many advantages of ratio analysis, it is not free from limitations. These are, in ratio analysis, the qualitative aspect has been ignored. Price level changes affects the ratio. Standard ratios cannot be determined easily. Financial statements are window dressed. Ratios are based on post performance and so many. Different authors have classified the ratios in their own ways. Some classify the ratios on the basis of financial statements. Some on the relative importance of ratios, some on specific purpose, and some on the basis of users. But in this book, for the purpose of the study, the functional classification is taken.